normal sort of housekeeping bits and pieces. So if you can mute your um, microphones for Wendy's presentation, it just makes it much, much easier. It means she doesn't get any background noise. So you just tap your camera and you tap yourself and you can find it there at the top of the screen to mute the camera. Thank you, Julia. Thank you, everybody, for that. Makes a big difference and makes it easier for Wendy. So we're joined this afternoon by Emerald Cruises, by Wendy, who's been working with MMT for a good few years, it's fair to say, um, a good few years. And Emerald is a, is, a, is a brand that's getting more and more popular with our customers, there's no doubt about it. And the fact we've had so much interest this afternoon signifies that a lot of people are keen to hear more about it because it's not as household a name as some others. So it's great to have the opportunity for Wendy to put, put across exactly what they do. And also some of the stunning new arrivals that they've got in their fleet, which I think will blow you away later on in the presentation. At the same time, what we thought we would do is rather than it being a general presentation on, on Emerald and River Cruise, we thought we would highlight what has been undoubtedly the hottest selling ticket on River Cruise, which is Douro. So Douro, obviously in Portugal, for those that didn't know it, is a really, really hot seller. And it's going to be great for Wendy to talk you through a lot of the reasons, hopefully, why people are finding this part of the world just so popular for a river cruise, because obviously we all think Danube, Rhine, all that sort of stuff. So why is all of a sudden this river that, quite honestly, I'd never heard of, um, why is it proving so popular for holidaymakers at the moment? So um, as usual, please tap your screen, ask a question in the chat during Wendy's presentation, and then we'll pick all those up at the end and hopefully get everything you might want to know that isn't covered in the presentation picked up. So um Without further ado, I'll pass over to you, Wendy. So over to you. Thank you so much, Miles. Good afternoon, everybody. I hope everybody's okay. Now, I know you've all muted. Oh, there you go. I've got a couple of waves. Uh, now, I am presenting to you this evening all the way from the Douro. I'm not really. I am in my lounge, the same as you guys, in Stourbridge in the West Midlands. Now, my dad always says to me, you can take the girl out of the black country, but you can't take the black country out of the girl. So hopefully you'll understand me OK. Um, it's a real pleasure to be here with you this afternoon. I've got a cup of coffee. I hope you all have too. So and we're just going to have a nice chat, just like I'm there with you, uh, talking all about Emerald Cruises. Now, for those of you that haven't heard about Emerald Cruises, we're part of Scenic Group. So Emerald Cruises and Emerald Waterways are Scenic's little sister. So Scenic Group's been going for over 35 years and, and Emerald Cruises and Emerald Waterways since back in 2014. We are really privileged to, there's some fantastic river companies out there, but you can look on Cruise Critic and for the last five years, we've actually won the award, the best exceptional um, river cruise line for value, which I think really speaks volumes. And um, we won over the Witch uh, Magazine's top river cruise provider. And I think that also speaks volumes as well. Well, so I'm going to take you on a little bit of a journey with me today. Um, now, our, our commitment to your health and safety for yourselves and also for our crew is at the highest priority. Um, we want you to know that you're in safe hands and when we can commence sailing, there will be some changes, but they will all be very, very positive. And you can ask anybody in the shop if you want to know what the changes and implications are, but it's all for your safety. Does anyone recognise that building? Hopefully you're all saying Budapest, that's it. I can see it, well done. So why why choose emerald cruises just so you know i've sort of told you a little bit about us we are an award-winning company we've got state-of-the-art boutique we call them starships in the fleet so we've got state-of-the-art starships i've got a real contemporary feel i am going to show you some photos as we go through the presentation so hopefully you will agree with me now we're very inclusive i'll go through all of the inclusions as well we're very much about discovery but discovering your way giving you the freedom to choose what you want to do whether it be pop of the pop a short on your own or taking part of a group because everybody likes different kind of holidays don't they i can see you're all nodding so what sets us apart what what's the difference something you'll hear quite a lot today is a couple of different words innovation and exceptional emerald value so 
we're really innovative with the designs of the ship and you'll see more as we go through. And the exceptional emerald value, it's kind of everything that's included in the price. If it's not included in the price, you don't need it. So when we own and we operate all of our ships, which makes a real difference. So we, we own and operate them and they act, they're actually designed for the rivers that we sail down. We have immersive excursions. You'll always feel safe and secure when you're with us. So I keep saying this exceptional emerald. emerald. You know, this is live now. I keep saying exceptional emerald value, but what does it mean? What does it actually mean? So the cost of your holiday, you've got your return flights. Now you can fly from 16 different regional airports. We'll always do, including Bristol, including, oh, I can see some smiles there, including Bristol, Cardiff, uh, Birmingham. We will always do our best to do a direct flight. Sometimes it isn't possible. Uh, but we do use scheduled air and we will do our best to get you the flight path that you desire. Um, all your meals on board are included. Now, always as standard, beer, wine and soft drinks are included with your meals. But at the moment, we if you're looking at booking a holiday for 2022 or 2021, we've got a free all inclusive premium drinks package as well. So that would make it fully all inclusive. Now, included daily excursions. I'll talk to you a little bit about the different types of excursions. We've got Emerald Active. If you wanted to get a little bit fit, if you'd like to do a walking tour, a hike, you might even want to get on a bike. Um, we don't have those on the Douro, Douro, but we do have them on our other rivers. And we have Emerald Plus. Now, Emerald Plus is the real special excursions or, or um, events, something that's really immersive to get you best of the region. Because we know that you, you, know, you river cruise to see the sites. So we want to be able to give you the sites that allow you to do it your way if you want to. You'll always have complimentary bottled water, uh, the teas and coffees, machines in the lounge, one of my favourites, always really, really busy. So you've got really great teas and coffee machines. Um, and then of course you pour all your fees and your taxis and your Wi-Fi. You might want to keep in touch with home or you might think, you know what, I'm on holiday. Don't want to tell them anything. Your choice. And all your tips are taken care of as well. So let's just have a little look um, up to our fleet. So we've got five ships on the Rhine, the Mine and the Danube. We are introducing another ship to the Emerald Waterways fleet called Emerald Luna later on this year. Now, home from home in the south of France is the Emerald Liberté on the Rhône and the Seine rivers. Now, what you're going to be seeing today is the Emerald Radiant. She's a starship on the Douro. Now, back in 2019, we built our own ship to, again, we own and operate it um, on the Mekong River. So for those of you that want to get further afield and see uh, Vietnam and Cambodia, we have a different um, length, we have a, a week's cruise on there, and you can do different length of tours involved in that as well. So that's the wonderful uh, fleet of starships. Now, here is the Emerald Radiant. So this is her in her docking position on the Douro. Do you want to come along with me? Come on board, sit back, relax. Let's go and have a little look at the ships themselves. So all of these pictures and images are actually from the Douro, from the Radiance. Now, the atrium is three tiered, it's really light and bright. Now the first time I ever stepped foot on um, a ship was the Emerald Sun in Budapest. Now you probably know by now, this girl can talk, but the first time I actually stepped foot on the Emerald Sun, I was a little bit speechless because not only was it in Budapest, we dock right opposite, but it was this wonderful welcome, this atrium, light, bright, really spacious. Just a little bit about me, I won't give you my history, but I used to work on cruise ships. I worked on cruise ships for about 12 years. And, you know, you are on some of the largest ocean liners in the world. Uh, and I, I couldn't imagine what it would be like to be on a ship with approximately, you know, up to 180 people. I thought the cabins would be small. And, you know, how, what about space? Where do you put your clothes? 
when I stepped foot on board, I was like, wow, I can understand why they're spacious. So it's a real pleasure to be able to take you on this little journey. So let's step through into the Horizon Bar and Lounge. Now, this is the hub of the ship. This is where you'll have uh, welcome drinks, cocktail receptions. The cruise director will always do an evening talk tell you what to expect the next day. The captain also does a welcome cocktail reception. There's even a little dance floor in, them, in there as well. Light, bright, great place for you to meet friends, if you want to, of course. And then you've got the Reflections restaurant. So, so with River Cruising, with Emerald, we've got one main uh, dining area. This is the Reflections. You've breakfast and lunch is buffet, and then evening is a la carte. Now, you will always have a good old classic. Now, when I say a good old classic dish, I mean whether it be chicken or steak or fish. But the best thing about sailing on the rivers, you want to experience some of the cuisine of the regions you're sailing through. If you're sailing through the Douro, you want to be drinking some very nice wine to go along with it as well, don't you? So your food and your wine is always paired. One of my favourite places is um, in the, is the terrace, right at the front of the ship. Now, part of the terrace, you can have um, breakfast, early breakfast, if you wanted to sort of have an early breakfast, a late breakfast, a little bit of a light snack, a little bit of, little bit of grazing. Imagine sitting here and going, ready for it, down the door row. So this is sort of like the Douro. You've got the Dom Lue Bridge there, and then you've got the two different sides of the river. So you've got the Douro. Now I've wrote this down so I can pronounce it correctly. Villa Nova de Galia. Now I'm sure half of these things, the, the pronunciations, I may or may not be making them up, but they're spelt correctly. So we'll, we'll, we'll hope for the best. So that is what you will see as you're sailing away from the Douro. Now up on the sand deck, Plenty space for you to sit and relax. You may notice a little walking track. You can actually walk around as well. So wellness is a really big thing. We've got um, some are nodding, some are shaking. I'd be there sitting there with a book, I tell you. <laughs> and the wellness is a really big thing. So we not only do we do activity excursions ashore, but we have an activity manager on board. So if you want to do a little bit of yoga, a little bit of Pilates, you can do, okay? Uh, and they'll also be part of the entertainment of an evening as well. So this is your sun deck. Something that's quite special about all of Emerald Waterway's starships is the swimming pool. I've got a few photos to show you with the other ships in the fleet. The Emerald Radiance, because she's got hundred up to 112 guests, because of the size of the ship, now the Douro River has got some of the deepest locks in Europe. That it's real, oh, it's an engineering marvel to ever go through um, the locks. It really is quite impressive. So the Douro is, because the, the radiance is built for it, it's smaller and it's narrower to be able to go through those locks. So that's the sun deck. Now look at that incredible picture. That's what I was just telling you about earlier where you've got two different sides of the river banks. So as you're sailing down the dunya, the, the, as you're sailing down the Douro, you're going to be as you leave the cost sort of cosmopolitan city, where you've got those pastel coloured buildings and those incredible terracotta rooftops. You'll then start to sail towards the UNESCO heritage site of the Douro Valley, where you've got vineyards that flank the banks and where all the wine was cultivated. So you really see a change in the experience. So when somebody says, who's the Douro for? The Douro is for everybody, okay. So a little bit back to um, on board. So spa and wellness. There is a gym, believe it or not. It's a state-of-the-art small gym. Um, <laughs> first time I ever stayed on one of the ships, my cabin was at, actually opposite the gym. When people are like, have you been to the gym? I'd be like, oh yes, every day. Well, I walked past it, but we didn't have to tell people that, did we? Um, the, the gym is included. The spa and wellness and the hair salon has got an additional charge to that. So you can have massages and facials, or if you wanted to, maybe for the captain's welcome and get your hair done, you can do. And you can get booked that on board. 
would you like to come and have a look at some of the suites? We'll start off with the Emerald State Room. Okay, now I don't ever think some of the pictures ever do it justice really. This is, for, for those of you that may have been on another river ship, you may have sailed with us, or a cruise ship, 153 square foot feet is actually the, the size of a standard um, inside cabin on board the ocean liner. So you can really see the size is, is quite spacious. Now I fit, I'm just over five foot, five foot one and a bit, very important. I can actually stand right underneath that window there. So the window doesn't open. These are on the lower deck. Okay, so there's just some of these staterooms that are on the lower deck there. The beds can be made into twin or queen size beds. Really, really spacious. Your suitcase fits under the bed, giving you all that extra room. My favourite balcony cabins are these, the Panorama Balcony Suites. I've mentioned innovation. Now, the reason why these suites are so innovative is if you can just have a look at the picture where the balcony area is, you see the carpet where it meets the wooden floor. This is actually inside your suite itself. So, so we can actually give uh, maximum space on board the ships. We've got a balcony where it lets the outside in. So it, it, it's very spacious. You can sit down and you can relax. Now to the left hand side, there's a button. You press that button and the window drops down. So if you are in the door row, and you've got beautiful blistering sunshine, you can lower that window down. If you're doing a Christmas market river cruise, you're not necessarily going to want that window down, are you? But at least you can still sit and relax and see the views. Uh, it's quite good as well if you're going through a lock and you don't want to get up and put your dressing gown on and go up on deck in the middle of the night to experience going through the lock, you can just open those curtains up. So that's the Panorama Balcony Suite. We're now going on to some of our top suites that we have on board. This is the owner's one bedroom suite. So this has a separate living and bedroom area. You've got the windows in the bedroom and you've got that really almost double size uh, balcony where you can sit on the balcony. You'll also have an espresso coffee machine. There's an iPad available and a mini bar. And the mini bar is included with the owner's one bedroom suite. Now, this is where our dream of my suite would be if I sail this area here. It is magnificent. This is the Riverview suite. Now, these are only available on the Radiant, so we don't have these on the other uh, starships. There's two of these. They're right at the back of the ship. Now, you can imagine, can't you, lying there. Just make sure you close the curtains if you're lying there in your dressing gown as you're watching the world go by. It's a really, really beautiful, well appointed suite. So we've had a little look about the ship, the Radiance, told you a little bit about Emerald Waterways. Now, before I forget, I really must tell you to set your alarm for Friday at 4 p.m. Because if you don't want to take my word for it, I can't imagine why not. I'm very trustworthy. But the lovely Jane McDonald, you may have already seen this because they're repeats that are on Channel 5. But we're really privileged to have uh, Jane McDonald on the Emerald Radiance. And it will be shown again on Friday at 4 p.m. It's a really enjoyable show. And Miles joked with me earlier. He said, are you going to do a song? I was like, Really? No, I do not want to scare your lovely customers away. And we were talking about famous songs for the black country, but um, I said I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't um, put you through my dulcet tones. <laughs> so let's have a little look at the eight day secrets of the Doro. Now we mentioned that the flights are included. So on day one, you fly from your airport. You'd be transferred to the ship all included and um, on the first day you would stay overnight and you actually leave very early in the morning now my lovely colleague and friend William from Scotland um, has actually experienced all of this I've only done a little bit of it and he said you must tell everybody to get up really really early in the morning because it is a, a spectacular sail away as, as Porto starts to come to life 
And day two, you'll spend all of the day on board on the river going through the, the Douro Valley. And the Douro Valley, Valley is a UNESCO heritage site. So you'll, as you can see here, you've got you know, the coloured buildings. You'll start to sail and you'll see all of the vineyards, the steep vineyards on the hills, they're terraced dines that led there's a lot of historic towns along there as well so you'll really start to feel from the hustle and the bustle along to the real calm and the beauty of the Douro Valley and then later on the following day you'll get to Pinhau now Pinhau is uh where you get there on the sorry Porto start again when they all sound very similar don't they they've all got lots of peas in them in how you're actually there in the morning so on the morning on that day you can go and to a vineyard there's an excursion to a vineyard on day two we'll talk about the excursions in a moment and then you are then going to sail to Vigo de Taron and that so day four is where you have the opportunity to go to Salamanca so this is in Spain. It's about a two hour journey away. So you'll take a coach, you'll take you into Salamanca where there's a couple of different options of excursions that you can go. You can also do the one where you go to, I mean, I've, I've actually been to Salamanca and it is absolutely breathtaking. I really would recommend that two hour journey to go and see it. But you can um, see the Casa de la Conchas again. I think I've said that exactly as it's meant to be pronounced. And that's the building where there's over 300 shells on there. So it's quite exquisite. So that's day four. Now day five, you're gonna go to Pacino. Okay, now Pacino is again, a couple of different things that you can do. If you wanted to, you could do a canoe experience. So you can actually experience the river by canoe. So you actually see a completely different vista than if you are on the ship, or you can go and visit the Coa Valley. So the museum, Portugal and the Douro is steeped of history. So it really does explain all the history in the Coa Valley Museum. And then day six is Regea or Regua. Regea, should we go with that one? I'm going to go with Regea. So day six is Regea. And this is where you can go to the Baroque village of Lamego. That's a really, really beautiful village there. Now, this is where we got one of our active excursions and it's the Shrine of the Lady of Remedies. Now, if you want to and you want to get active, you can walk all the way up the 600 steps. No, I'm only joking. We're really kind. We actually take you to the top and you can walk down the 600 steps. Quite spectacular. And then day seven, you're back to Porto. So day seven is where you're going to experience Porto. So when you start, you sail out. On day seven, you're going to be able to experience it and do the different tours. There's a couple of different ones and options that you can do. Or tram stop is just outside if you wanted to get off and go on the tram and see the city. You've got lots of different options here. The door, Secrets of the Douro is for sun worshippers, history buffs, and one of my favourites, may I say, wine lovers, because don't forget the a port was made and cultivated in the Douro on those steep banks. So you'll see on the left, so we've got the Emerald Plus excursions. Now this could be on board the ship or it could be off in the most uh, magnificent uh, venue. You have the Emerald Active, you know, the active excursions, as I mentioned, the canoeing, or you can, you've got some walking tours, some city tours of Salamanca if you wanted to. And then the included excursion, you'll always have included excursions every day. But hopefully, and this is just one itinerary, you can see the difference. You will have Emerald Plus excursions. These are the ones that you can't wait to tell your family about. Then you've got the Emerald Active. So if you want to enjoy walking, the, the, activity, the active levels are different depending on what you want to get out of your lovely cruise. And you'll always have the included excursion as well. Now the wonderful, wonderful teams um, in all of the different shops, whichever shop you go to or speak to, they'll have more information on this 
it's always a real pleasure to work with the guys from uh, Mars Morgan. So let's go on to the next slide then. Something just a little bit different. So sometimes eight days, it's not enough, is it? I mean, I'm not going to lie. If somebody said to me, do you want to go on a month's holiday now? I think I'd jump at the chance. I'd go for a night, actually. We have got some different, um, there's still the same eight day, sorry, the seven night river cruise, the secrets of the doorway, but we can also add on three days in Lisbon. Now you can do this before or after. We don't just give you the three days, but you also get the excursions and some meals included too. So you, you, you're gonna be well looked after and then you'll, you'll actually get um, a coach transfer between Porto and Lisbon. But if you, again, wanted to do something a little bit different, you can do Madrid. So you can, again, before or after, you can stay in Madrid for two nights and then we do fly you between Porto and Madrid. That would be a bit of a long fly, a uh, long coach transfer, no, wouldn't it? Again, some of your meals are included and some an, an excursion. So it's really great to be able to combine the two. Something a little bit different. And this is where I get to talk a little bit about one of uh, other river ships, the Emerald Liberté. Do you feel like you would like to do something completely different? So you can actually do 15 days and it's a three river discovery. So you will do, you'll do fly to Porto and do that incredible seven nights down the Douro Valley and back to Porto again. Still get to experience Porto because on that last day back into Porto, you'll experience Porto itself. And then we're going to fly you over to the south of France and you're going to do the Rhone and the Sone. So still talking about the warmth and the sunshine and the wine, you still really get some culture as well. Like Arles have got the most impressive Colosseum in Arles, actually the second largest in uh, Europe outside Rome. Avignon, you've got amazing, um, in Avignon, you've got the Palais de Pape. So there's lots of different options there, but looking at the Douro and the south of France. So that's a three day river discovery. You can actually do the, the eight day southern France on its own if you just wanted to do that part of the river. Now, if I may, I'll just show you some of the other rivers and cities we visit. River cruising, it's about relaxing. It's about seeing the sights. One of my favorite river cruises is the Danube. The reason why I like the Danube so much is because you've got cities like Budapest and Vienna. You've got the incredible cities, but then you go into the Vaco Valley and you've got the smaller UNESCO heritage, heritage sites like Dunstein and Mel. So you've got a real diverse combination there. Um, what have we so you have got the Iron Gate. The Iron Gate is actually on the lower Danube. So the Iron Gate is just before you um, go right the way down to the end of the Danube um, to the Black Sea. You've got Cologne, Bratislava, Bucharest, Nuremberg is where you join the ship. It's quite a lot of different cities there in Amsterdam. Amsterdam is where you start for the Rhone, sorry, the Rhine. The other R end, the other R. So this is um, um, a discovery of the rivers in Europe that you can sail to. So we've looked at the Douro. We've looked a little bit at the Rhone and Sone in the south of France. Let's have a little look. If you haven't done a river cruise before, a lot of people hear about the Rhine and the Danube. That you've got the grandiosa castles and the vineyards as well, and the spectacular princess sort of in the hillside where you always want to go first of all. So that's Amsterdam. You can do Amsterdam and you can go through the Rhine Gorge and sail down into Basel in Switzerland or, or vice versa. You can start in Basel. Little tip for you, if you are looking to sort of do a flight from Cardiff or from Bristol, the flight times always work a little bit better if you start the journey in Basel and go up to Amsterdam. Now the Moselle River is the, one of the most picturesque rivers in Europe. You've got some incredible, like a horseshoe uh, river. The sights are amazing. And then the lower Danube there, you can see uh, you can go, um, Bel you can do ones that start in Budapest and go all the way down to Bucharest. Um, really incredible for nature lovers as well. So that's our map of Europe. 
Now, the difference between the ships, so mentioned earlier, we've got eight ships in Europe. Well, we will have when we get the lovely Luna. Now, all of the ships, apart from the Dora, because of the size, has got a heated swimming pool right at the back of the ship, right at the after the ship. But actually, when you're in the pool, you've got those incredible views. It's got a retractable roof. You can't quite see it here, but it's got a retractable roof. So in those nicer, warmer climates, if you're on the south of France, you can enjoy the sunshine. Um, it's heated water and you can actually press a button and you can swim against the waves. Well, not the waves, but you can swim against the air jet. So it's quite nice. Now, what is quite um, innovative, there's that word again, what is innovative with the heated swimming pool is, wait for it, of an evening, it transfers into an evening cinema. So it just gives you that extra space. So um, you'll about three times a week, you'll have um, a, a movie. It could be a, the latest blockbuster. If you're on the Danube, you might have a classical concert, a bit of Mozart, a bit of Strauss. There is a bar in there as well. Popcorn, you cannot have movie without popcorn. The chairs are really comfy. I might have been known to take a little nap on those. Don't tell anyone. So that's the evening cinema. And of an evening, if it's not used as a cinema, it's turned into just a bit of a, relax, a relaxation area with the bar. So it's a little bit of a quieter area. So that's the difference with all of these ships, apart from the radiance, because of the size of it, all has a pool that converts into a cinema. So I've taken you on a journey. We've talked about Emerald Waterways, where we come from. We're part of this, we are part of the scenic group. We've been going since 2014 and we've soon to have nine starships. Our owner, Glenn Moroney, he's actually from Australia and he started his business from having a coach on the Great Ocean Road. He's very, very, very innovative. Now we're scenic, we've got some fantastic ships. We've also got the most incredible super yacht that can actually is um, go from Arctic to Antarctic and everywhere in between. But our next venture is Emerald Yacht Cruises. So we're really proud to be able to start into going to the world of ocean and yacht cruises. But it's actually designed to get you into those small, intimate ports. We are very much about small ship cruising. So wait for it. Here she is. So this is the Emerald Azura. She will be with us in January 2022. She's actually floated out. She's hit the water. Um, incredible um, images. Really look, I just look at that in Dubrovnik. And as I say, I've worked on some of the, some of the largest ships in the world, but the problem is with being on some of those ships, you've always got to get shuttle buses or you've always got to dock at anchor. Glenn desired this, this, he wanted a, a, a yacht to be able to go into some of the ports that you've never heard of. I all put my hands up when I was looking at where she sails to. I was like, I've actually not heard of that port before. And I had to Google it. And I've done Mediterranean seasons for time after time. So we're really, really um, looking forward to joining the the Azura joining us, what an image there. So you can see why she's sort of going to be a super, oh. the, um, the design of it. It's going to take 100 guests, 50 suites. So everything that you know, become to know and love. Sorry, I've just gone past that. There it is. I'll come back to the map in a minute. I wanted to show you this. Everything that you know and love about Emerald cruises, you'll be able to do and experience a river cruise, but also a lot of familiarity will be moved into our yacht cruises as well. So the guest experience, so the Horizon Bar and Lounge, the, the Reflections Restaurant, the, the Wellness Centre, all will all be there as well. So look at that pool. I think I've got a thing for infinity pools. I can just really imagine myself sitting there. Let's just show you the cruise map. So she will start in January 2022 in the Red Sea. She'll then cruise through the Eastern Mediterranean to the Adriatic coast and then into the Western Mediterranean. So we have 2022 all on sale. 
And a little birdie has told me that 2023 won't be so far off being talked about. So watch this space and keep in touch with your favourite um, Miles Morgan Travel Consultant. I've just showed you the pictures there, really open, really spacious, everything that you, you kind of like, you'd like to get to know and love. Now, I really appreciate you being here with me today. So there's a couple of different things just to tell you about. Um, with uh, offers that we have got. So first of all, if we look at our uh, European river cruising on the um, Europe, the Mine, the Rhine and the Danube and the Douro and the Rhone and the Sone, you can save up to £1,200 per person. Sorry, per couple. £1,200 per couple. And, and also get a free complimentary premium drinks package, okay? So that will literally make it all inclusive. The only things you would have to pay for on board is if you wanted to take, um, have your hair done or maybe a spa treatment. If you wanted to make some more savings and pay for your voyage 12 months ahead of time for balcony suites and above, you can save an additional 10%. So if you wanted to save an additional 10%, Hey, 12 months ahead of time. Now, I know what you're sitting there thinking, oh, that's, you know, a lot in these sort of like times. We have got a fantastic flexible booking program. So we, uh, all of the terms and conditions uh, and the guys in the shops will tell you about, but it's, we will be protecting you and make it flexible for you to book. We all need something to look forward to. And then our yacht cruises, as I said, are on sale right into sort of like at the end of 2022, beginning of 2023. And we've got, um, not too distant future to look forward to those itineraries being released but especially for you all thank you so much for being with me today and taking time out of your day and having a coffee with me we've got a webinar exclusive for you all so all of the savings that I've talked about we're just going to give you an additional 250 pounds per person if you would like to book anything for 2022 that's an extra 250 pounds per person now I think this is where well, hopefully the lovely Miles will be there and he will come back here he is and I just really want to say a, a very big thank you to you all very good Wendy thank you um My I don't know, what is that? No, there's currently no questions in the chat but I'm sure there will be some questions coming up in a moment um feedback from your guests when they go on on Doro yes what is it that people that wows people when they go is it the scenery is it the it's, combination of what they can do with the wine and stuff what 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 is it it's first of all it's the scenery and it we it's the change of porto and you know you've kind of got this real city cosmopolitan vibe to it and then literally as soon as you start sailing out and you go under the dom louis bridge and you sail out you're into that kind of serene Doro Valley, completely different change of pace, you know, in terrain. But it's also the special things we do as well. A lot of people absolutely love the evening that we do in the vineyard. That's exclusively for Emerald guests. So it's all the different little things, just the choice as well, I suppose. The mm. choice you do and what you would like to do. And if you don't want to go ashore, you don't have to. Why not stay on board, have a glass of wine, sit on the sun deck and look at those incredible views? Well, I think that's that. That's what river cruising is all about. That's the great thing about river cruising is is scenery twenty four seven. That's yeah. the that's the wonderful thing, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I had a a, a friend of mine who, who who was in the travel industry. He's retired now. Um, been to an awful lot of places around the world, and he did a Doro cruise two years ago now, mm -hmm. and said it was just the most spectacular experience. He's a he's a bit of a wine buff as well, but he absolutely loved it. Thought it was sensational. Oh, yeah, it is about the wine and the food as well, isn't it? But definitely the wine. Yeah. So, and, you, you know, it's the sun, isn't it, as well? It's really nice to know that pretty much going to get some really glorious weather as well. And talk to us about this yacht. I mean, oh. it, it looked amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, what can you tell us? What, what, what do you think will be the wow bits of that yacht? What, why, why will people be going? You know, it looks amazing. Why will people be going? Is it, is it, is it the itineraries and where the ports of call it can get into? Is it, is it the, the onboard experience? What, what are you thinking it's going to deliver for customers? A couple of different things. I think it'll be the freedom and the flexibility to be on, on a small yacht. 
that we might be able to just sort of like stop and go off the, the the back deck and be maybe we've got we're gonna have some different when I say like different toys like, sn like snorkeling we're gonna be releasing um shortly other things we're gonna have so maybe a bit of kayaking or canoeing or um just be able to stop and get off and do to explore at your own pace as well but it, I think as well it's just very small villages and the quaint towns that you know you go ashore have fresh food, bring it back on board. Oh, it's going to be amazing. The chef. Mm. I think if, you know, if, if you're an ocean cruiser watch it, watching this this afternoon, you've experienced big ships and small. Yeah. You know, one, the onboard experience is different because there's a lot less people. Yeah. But I think the other thing is, it is simply the ports of call, the places yeah. you can get into that large ships simply can't dock. Or equally, the fact that they can dock, but they tender... Or they yeah. have to go, you know, Ouch. three miles out, three miles out the town. Whereas with something like that, you can walk straight in the middle of cities and destinations. Just spectacular. Yeah, there's. Um, I mean, Dubrovnik is, I think, will always be one of my favourite places to travel to. So I think there's so many different things you can do from mm -hmm. Nick and all of the different islands you can visit. But you know, like from an ocean cruiser, you you are tendered sort of like you know 15 minutes away or you can you can anchor but then you've got a coach got to get a coach in so it's good seeing those larger cities but also those small places that you've never heard of it's going to be mm. spectacular that's what i'm yeah saying. having done dubrovnik you're, you're dead right it, it, on, on a big ship i did it you know nothing yeah. would be better than just going straight in would just be sensational particularly into a place like that which is yeah. wonderful really and wonderful the length of time and the freedom to explore is, uh, you know, as what you want to do. Mm, mm. Be great. So are there any more questions? Last call for questions before we let Wendy go. Um, so thank you, Wendy. It's been really good. I've really enjoyed it. And I think certainly, you know, it gives people the opportunity to see exactly what Adoro Cruise is all about, um, because it is incredibly popular. And, you know, if anybody watching this, if you're keen or interested in booking, it isn't sales talk to say get out there and book because yeah. it is selling and selling very well, Wendy, isn't it? It absolutely is. Year after year, the Doro is becoming more and more and more sought after. And mm. if we could build and put any more ships anywhere, I think it'd certainly be on the Doro. But the, they they limit the you know they limit the amount of ships that are actually available to sail on the Doro. So we are incredibly lucky, and we've got really good docking locations as well. And Think that makes a difference but don't take my word for it as well don't forget to watch jane on friday have a little look yes great great yeah. op great opportunity that will be on friday and i think it's fair to say that doro used to be river cruise's best kept secret the yes. problem is it isn't quite so much of a secret anymore so more and more people are booking so uh mm. yes. that's another reason to get in there definitely wendy thank definitely. you very much thank you to everybody that joined us this afternoon i hope you found it really really beneficial and learned a bit about doro and a bit about emerald and certainly about that amazing looking yacht which uh, really looks something special so Watch thank you very space. very much wendy yeah thank Take you care. so thank much you, everybody. can't Take wait care. to see thank you soon you. bye bye bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Thank, you. thank you everybody okay.